Hey everybody, I'm Kyle Rizdal. Welcome back on a Friday afternoon to Make Me Smart, where we make today make sense. God, my hair looks terrible. Sorry. Your hair looks at fabulous, Kai. Except right, for that okay, one little right. piece up to the side. I know. There, there's a little but, thing. I know. There's a thing going on. Yeah. There. I know. But uh, otherwise, it's great. I'm Kimberly Adams. It is Happy Hour Friday, also known as Economics on Tap, even though that is a beer thing. And I have, of course, as per <laughs> usual, a cocktail. Uh, the live stream is up and running. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who is joining us on YouTube or Discord, or if you're listening later on the podcast. We appreciate it and hope. Yeah. You are having a good end of your week, or for those who are working on the weekends, a good midweek. Midweek, yeah, there you go. Uh, all right, so I heard you with the with the cocktail shaker earlier. What are you making? Uh, so I put the actual decision on the drink because I was torn between a Manhattan and a Sazerac, and so I asked the folks on Discord, oh. and they voted Sazerac, hence yeah, Sazerac. Yeah, I do like a good Sazerac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bourbon neat guy delicious. or a Sazerac guy, yeah. Oh yeah, good for you. Yes, good for you. Nothing like a good Sazerac. Uh, yes, I, I'm you? being completely boring. Golden Road Hazy Heal the Bay IPA, brewed here in Los Angeles. A little hazy IPA. I've got some things to do this but afternoon, but you know so what? I can't drink too hard. You got That's complicated good. stuff with work. You get to have an easy drink. Uh, okay, well, you're being very generous, but okay, I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate that. My 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 work and my life are not that complicated right now. All right. What's no, everybody else They're drinking? Not. Let's see. I see uh, a, a vodka and monster to stay awake and enjoy the evening. That's like yeah, that man. green stonk tail. Eesh. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Paloma. So refreshing. Something that I can't pronounce, which I'm guessing is a beer with grapefruit. Uh, Long Island iced tea mix. Schiffenhofer. Hefeweizen with grapefruit. Hey, we got a St. Louis IPA. There you go. There you go. Uh, hard seltzer. Hard lemonade. Lots of stuff. Tony Whiskey Wagner coming in with Phil the Kirkland Schmidt. signature. <laughs> God. Phil Schmidt, do not drink Diet Coke and whiskey, man. Do something else. Holy cow. Oh. Classic yeah, martini with blue cheese olives. I don't even know what those are. Well, it's all right. olives stuffed with blue cheese. Just like so your garnish for oh. your martini would just have cheese in it. Does that taste good? I don't like cheese. So, here's here's the know, thing. All right, sorry. Wait. I, no, no, no. No, that's fine. Well, so look, this is very interesting because as listeners of this podcast know, I'm like, I'm, I'm a mono beverage guy, right? I'm beer, mm. occasionally bourbon. What's interesting to mm -hmm. me about you and, and to a lesser degree about Molly, but, but mostly about you, is that you uh, sample a variety of cocktails. You're not, I do. you're not wedded to, to one thing, right? Cause so one day it'll be a margarita, then it's a Sazerac and then it's, you know, and I just think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have like a go, but, but look, so if, if my go-to is red wine, stranded on I a drink desert red island. wine. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Lots of red wine, oh. uh, mainly like heavier, uh, full bodied reds, like uh, Zinfandels and Malbecs and uh, occasionally like Pinot Noir. Oh. So I like, drink a lot of red blends. Um, but I, I, I did not, I did not have that down on my Kimberly Adams bingo card, but okay. All right. <laughs> Well, what you. is Every on your Kimberly Adams bingo podcast. card, Kai? Well, I, well, no, it was, it was, it, I was just <laughs> remarking on your, on your, you know, flexible nature in, in alcoholic beverages <laughs> and red wine was not on the list, you know? Okay. Uh, <laughs> All no, right. No, no so harm, I'm no getting foul, no insult meant. a lot of questions here about what happened after the cork incident last week. Um, well, and... let's answer it, shall we? So the cork, uh, for those who, who did not pay attention to the live stream last week, I had a bottle of scotch that a beloved friend had given me. But when I went to open it during the show, the cork broke and the it began to dissolve. And so my wonderful niece brought me a bottle of water, which is what I had. So then later after the show, I tried to get the cork out the traditional way by turning the bottle upside yeah. down, putting the cork in all that stuff. It didn't, it crumbled. Yeah. And so I have been drinking the scotch by pouring it through a mesh strainer every time I want some. Yeah, yeah, that's what you gotta do. Well, you could, you could like yeah. pour it into a container and then, and then pour it back into the bottle and get like a different cork, no? I don't have a funnel at the moment. Somebody borrowed it. Oh. Oh uh, yeah, funnels are very useful. Very useful. Mm. All right. Well, good. Yeah. All right. We, All right. we are now get to up the news. to speed on, on the cork incident. Let us get to the news. Um, so I uh, so there was a thing that happened today at the White House, which 
uh, I'm, we're going to play you some audio, and it's terrible audio of President Biden standing as President Trump used to do next to a helicopter answering questions. But it's really important on a lot of levels, and I want to play it, and I want to give a little, I want to get your take here, Kimberly, and, and give you my take. So here we go. Here's here's the sound. It's mm -hmm. Biden today at the White House. What's your message to platforms like Facebook? They're killing people. I mean, it really, they are, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. And, that, and, they're, and they're killing people. So in case you couldn't hear it at the beginning of that tape, it's on COVID misinformation. What's your message for platforms like Facebook? And the president said, they're killing people. The only pandemic we have is the unvaccinated and they are killing people. So I'm, I'm really torn about this, right? Because on the one hand, he's factually right, right? All mm -hmm. this disinformation, disinformation is causing people not to get vaccinated. We see it all the time and we see people die because of that. On the other hand, that was not the right way for him to answer this question for two reasons. Number one, it is a big deal when the president of the United States goes after a privately held company, not privately held, a private company, right? Facebook is publicly traded, but in the nomenclature, that means it's, it's called a private company, right? And as we know and have talked about on this podcast, there's no First Amendment, nothing, and there's none of that, right? And this is the president. A private did after Boeing and carrier air conditioning. I mean, you know, Trump, Trump did it all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So, so this was this is a big deal, and I would submit that there was a better way for him to get this same point across. And and my go-to example here is from Ken White, who full disclosure is a, is a personal friend of mine in real life, but mm -hmm. is also a First Amendment lawyer. Uh, and Ken, in a in a series of six tweets this afternoon laid it out really well. And, and fundamentally, what the White House should have said was, look, we call on Facebook, and this is quoting Ken, Facebook to reconsider its stance. We've identified common anti-scientific propaganda that put lives at risk. Facebook can continue to profit off that, but it can choose not to as well. And that would have been a better way, I think, for Biden to answer that question, because bringing down the force of the federal government, like he just literally does by opening his mouth, is not the right way to do this. And I'm curious as to your take. I think Facebook has proven itself to be so powerful and resilient that this idea of the president being bringing the full weight of the federal government down on a company by speaking out about it, even if we look back to Trump, some of these companies are just so powerful that it doesn't matter the way that it used to, because all those companies you listed that Trump went after, they're all fine. They're all doing fine. Totally agree. They're all fine. Totally and Facebook is going to be fine now what now to the to the actual meat of what he said yeah i mean yeah. What, what do they say the ultimate defense against libel is if it's the truth that that is true it is an absolute defense against libel that's right yeah so as someone who personally has people in my family who are ingesting disinformation and misinformation and have chosen yeah. not to get vaccinated for whom i'm in, in missouri <laughs> literally the hot spot uh and i'm very worried yeah. it's yeah it's hard for me to take issue with that given the scale of the problem could it have been expressed better yes but we knew this about biden when he was running for president that he speaks in his sort of way and we had we hoped when trump was running oh surely the guy who's talking like this during the campaign is going to get it together once he's president so if there's a lesson from trump it's that the same person you but seeing the campaign is likely to be person, the same right. person who shows right. up every right. day at work. And right. same thing with right. Biden. This is who he is. Well, so that's what that's Levi Adams said here in the comments, right? Levi Adams says, well, this wasn't a prepared statement. It was Joe Biden responding, not necessarily the executive branch. The catch, of course, is that Joe Biden is the executive branch. And look, I get your point about Joe Biden is who he's going to be. And, and, you know, he gets all, you know, hey, folks, let me tell you this and let me tell you that. I just, it got me today. That, it just bugged me and I wanted to make a mention of it. You know. Well, and and if we can step back a little bit further, the fact that we have two examples back to back of presidents not exercising yeah. the kind of yeah. restraint uh, when speaking about businesses or things like this that we might typically expect, mm -hmm. you know, it can mean a couple of things. Either we had 
We need to readjust our expectations of what the presidency is and how presidents, modern presidents behave. Or, you know, we need to start electing different types of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Totally true. Both really good points. Uh, okay, that's my news. That's what I got. Mm. I have so many links, but they are all about the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. starting with a story from CBS, the largest wildfire in the U.S. spreads larger than the Great. size of New York City and just 7% contained. Jump over to a story in Bloomberg. Extreme heat in the U.S. sparks a squeeze on shellfish supplies, basically because all of the fish and shellfish are dying from extreme heat. Okay, New York Times, here we go. Work injuries tied to heat are vastly undercounted, study finds. New data underline how heat waves can hurt people, especially the poorest workers, in unexpected way. And just for fun, let's go to Germany. Not fun at all. Uh, this is a story yeah. that NPR has. Flood deaths are yeah. rising in Germany and officials blame climate change. Now, as I was pulling all of these together, I kept thinking back to those movies from the 90s and early 2000s when sort of climate change was getting into the zeitgeist and there were all these apocalyptic movies of like all of these chaotic things yeah. happening and the opening montages of these movies were always like the newsreels of the fires and the floods and the yeah. you know all these things and this is where we are this is where we are it we're is, in it this is climate it change is, it's not far away anymore it's here <laughs> <laughs> and, I, oh, I keep, and, oh, yes, I, and I, pandemics. Yeah. Thank you on on the YouTube and, and chat. And pandemics. That's right. That's and right. pandemics. I I, I really want to rewatch um, Interstellar because I really liked mm. it. But yeah. but I don't know if I can handle the basic premise of that film, which, if you remember, is yeah, just that's... apocalyptic Earth and climate change and terrible. And I'm like, ah, God, you know. That, yeah, hey, Bob, come on. Can. I know. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, no, we need some that. we need Fun. some dog love Come on. right now. Come here. This is grim. Come here. Come on. Come here. Here she comes. Um, yes. Yeah, so I don't know that dogs I can bring myself to watch better. Interstellar right now, you know? Dogs do, do make everything better. Um, yeah, we're here. And and I don't I'd be curious as to what folks are saying in the comments as to it it just it seems more real now than it did even a year ago. And maybe that's because we're yeah. all just super sensitized because of the pandemic. But the, the, the apocalyptic nature of what we have done to this planet is so much more tangible now. You know, Gene Hobbs uh, points out a, an article I was looking for, but I couldn't, I remember seeing it past my timeline, but I couldn't find it where there's a story about hundreds of baby flamingos dying in Turkey because of the drought. Oh um, God, no, I didn't see that. Heard yeah, about the mollusks other... and everything out West boiling in their own sand or whatever it was. Yes. Um, several yeah. people are talking about um, particular movies like The Day After Tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lots of people really sure. just want to see your dog, honestly. All right. Uh, I was just going to say, let me just, let me just, I need to change my camera settings here so I, I can actually see what yeah. I'm showing you guys. Mons, come here. Ryan is, Ryan is oh. waiting on the dark place sting. <laughs> I know. So this is Bonsai. Hi, She's a little Bonsai. bit of a mutt. She's uh, 10 or 11. Um, very mm. not comfortable being picked up, so I'm going to put her down in a minute. There, <laughs> oh. there you go. Thank you for that. If, if Willow wasn't Thank upstairs, you for that. if Willow wasn't upstairs with the human to which he is devoted in this house, or she, uh, I'd put her on camera too. But anyway, we got yes. the dogs that we got. Uh, yes. Okay, shall we? Please, let's. Yes, for the love of God. Let's. Good grief, let's. <laughs> All right, we got half full, half half empty. Half full, half empty. I swear I wasn't pre-gaming. Where you give your predictions <laughs> on various topics, Drew Jostad is out and Liana Squalachi is here. Take it away, Liana. Are you half full or half empty on anything infrastructure happening ever? Oh, such a good question. Are you? Really? Yep. It's unavoidable. Okay now really that's 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 what you're going with it's unavoidable it has to happen yeah <laughs> it's, 
Um, it has needed to happen. I think it is a bit, as you said, where it feels more present than it did even a year ago. So much yeah. of this is in people's faces in a way that it really wasn't. Also, I will say that the media is changing slightly. During the Trump yeah, years, we sure. were, to be perfectly honest, overwhelmed by everything mm -hmm. happening with the Trump administration. And now that that sort of fire hose has eased up a bit, mm -hmm. you see the few remaining media organizations kind of zooming out and the other really important things happening in the world. And as folks are sort of taking a lay of the land, the biggest one is climate change. And so I do think there's more public attention to it. More people are feeling the individual effects, see fire, size of New York mm -hmm. City, for sure. see floods, for sure. Germany. Um, all of these things make me feel like it's... <laughs> Um, what do you think? Really it's her own footnote. No, I was chuckling at your, your footnoting yourself. See also fire, <laughs> see also flood. Yeah, so you uh, have people yeah, so, in office who care yeah. about it. You have more public attention, more media attention, more global cooperation on it. Yes, there is still resistance in Congress, but I do think something's going to happen. I, I agree generally. I think the hard infrastructure bill uh, that is called the bipartisan bill uh, will pass. I'm I'm less sanguine about the three and a half trillion dollar uh, care economy bill that's going to have to be passed just by the Dems. So I'm I'm like yeah, you know same. you know two fifths anyway. So that's it. <laughs> Next. Are you half full or half empty on TikTok banning sponsored Bitcoin and investing content? Oh, so interesting. You know, so I just did an interview about TikTok as a viral generator of random sales of like products. It is crazy the reach that that and not, not only the reach, but the influence that that platform has. Um, number one consult your own uh, investment advisor. Number two, yes, TikTok definitely should have banned stupid financial advisor things from that platform because it's never good advice. That's where I am. Uh, half full on the ban, half empty on it mattering. Mattering? Half oh, oh yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Totally true. Yep. Totally true. Okay. Next. Um, Make Me Smart Next. listener Dale would like to know if you are half full or half empty on Comic Sans. <laughs> the font? Yeah, the, the clearly font. about the font, yes. Clearly about the font. Huh. Did I miss something um, here? I don't know this story. No, not at all. But, but maybe Dale just has a thing. So full disclosure. <laughs> all right. So when my kids were younger and I would go out of town, I would always leave them a note. Here's what's going on. Here's where I am. You can get me at this. I'm at this hotel, blah, blah, blah. And I would do it in Comic Sans for whatever reason. I don't do that anymore because they're older and they say, Dad, shut up. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm half full. I'm okay with Comic Sans. I have, no, I have no, no gripe against it. I'm very nostalgic for it. I used to, when I, you know, we first got a computer at home and there was this program on really old windows that lets you make your own greeting cards. And I would print out you know, sort of DIY greeting cards and mail them to my cousin in Florida who was the same age as me and total comic sans all the way. So nice yeah, memory. There you go. So, so let me just full. from the comments from the YouTube comments, Joshua Mayfield, he is a font designer, as he tells us in all caps, hot take is half full. Just saying. Hmm. There you go. The man's a professional. Uh, some Calibri fans with Debbie Donovan. I, I should say, Debbie, right. that is what that's I right. use in my emails all the time. Calibri, that, that's mine. <laughs> oh, I'm Ariel. <laughs> Crystal actually. Hurt says Ariel empty regular. for anyone over 12. Hmm? Ariel What's Regular that? 12. That's me. That's what I go with. Oh, no. No, no, no. Yeah. Let's Sorry. see. Sorry. Other people. Oh, here's something interesting. Um, so in funny. Discord, Snooth from Las Cruces says, I know dyslexic people who say that Comic Sans is easier for them to read. Hmm. Well, that's, that's a vote for Comic Sans. Oh, hmm. Tim from Austin. Papyrus is the truly bad one. I loved Papyrus as a kid. Wow. I really did. Wow. Which did, maybe I, what's, previewed what's so me living in Egypt later on. Hey. What? Oh, nice. What is so interesting is people have strong feelings about this. <laughs> right? I, I'm like, wow. But it's just font. Okay. Anywho. There's Liana. a whole documentary about Helvetica. 
I know. My mom know. likes Comic Sans. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Just saying. There you go. That's it. That's um, decided. Half full. All right, you want to do one more? Yes. Yeah, one more. Okay, are you half full or half empty on Indiana Jones 5? Could not be less empty. Could not be. Could not be. And it's only on Banderas and a, like a 75-year-old. No, I'm not being ageist. Harrison Ford, come on. Can we just, like, we should have left it with Indiana Jones. Full stop. Full stop. I mean, unless the whole thing is like going back and apologizing and readdressing <laughs> all of the Cultural culturally inappropriate that, yeah. stereotypes and appropriation and just negative images of yep. the previous movies and trying to like fix that somehow. I'm going to say yeah. empty, like all the way empty. Yeah. I loved the Indiana Jones movies when I was younger. And then I grew up and realized that that stuff is harmful to a lot of communities yeah. to be presented in that way. And now when I watch them, it's just like cringe. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. This is a definite leave well enough alone and half empty. Negative empty. Yeah. Take your pick. However empty you can get. Liana, where do you stand on that one? Huh. I don't feel that great about it. Mm. But Fair I enough. don't care that much about Indiana Jones. Don't come for me. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> look. I get it. You, you got to pick your got to pick your battles in life, and sometimes the Raiders of the Lost Ark is not the one. That's it. <laughs> I didn't see them uh, until I was already an adult, though. So I think that might be why. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Not wow. a movie buff. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, don't worry. Kai uh, isn't right. either. I, <laughs> oh snap. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't let Please, that one go. Play this thing. Give me that. Out. There we go. <laughs> Holy crow. All right, we're done. Mercifully coming to an end. Next week, look, there's a Ooh. lot going on next week. I'm traveling. Molly's doing her project. Kimberly is going to be here all week. So we're going to call this Make Me Smart with Kimberly and whoever from now on. In the meanwhile, send us your comments, your questions, your answers to the Make Me Smart question, please, which is what is something you thought you knew but you forgot about. You can send us an email or a voice memo at makemesmart.com. Uh, make me smart at marketplace.org or you can call us and here's the deal 508-827-6278 508-82-SMART or this mm -hmm. from Mike in Waterville, Ohio about another way to remember that phone number go Hi, this is Mike from Waterville, Ohio and I'm just calling on your new voicemail number but you're missing something your number is 508-U-D- Smart, which I think is great for Make Me Smart. Isn't that awesome? Thanks very much. Love listening to you every day. Bye. And we love you, Mike. You be smart. That might be the best listener voice memo ever. Come on, right? How great was that? I love it. Okay. I love it. It's like yesterday where I was like, you have to be smart to be on Make Me Smart. You be smart. That's, All that's, of us. That's right. Oops. That's right. You be smart. Like, it, right. It's not a podcast unless you whack the microphone at least once. <laughs> I know, right? All right. There's another sting that's going to signify the next stage of this program, which is the end of it, shall we? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's not even a sting. It's, a <laughs> it's wonderful. Make Me Smart is produced by Marissa Cabrera. Today's episode was engineered by the wonderful Liana Scalacci and Stephen Byung produces our favorite game, Half Full, Half Empty, and the YouTube live stream for all of y'all enjoying. Bridget Bodner is in charge of whatever this podcast is, because we never know. The executive director of On Demand is Star Nieves. It is Friday afternoon. All y'all have a great weekend, all right? Oh, my gosh. All y'all. I have to cover up my air conditioning vents for this because the noise is too loud oh, on no. the microphone. So I'm just, like, uh, stewing. <laughs> What, what, well, have I introduced you to my shed? Oh, right. uh, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Which has yeah. no AC. So, so we're both yeah. just glowing. That's all. Yeah, we're glowing. Glow. That's right. You, me, glow. and Elizabeth Taylor. We're glowing. That's right. Oh, love, my it. Goodness. love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Have a good everybody weekend, good? Kai, good and everybody else. We went a while. Yeah. yeah.